Hi, welcome back to Mrs. Hamilton's art room. Um, I am today continuing to do spring themes and today's art lesson is going to be about sunflowers and you can see here these are actual seed packets for sunflowers I've actually been planting a sunflower of my own this this spring and I'm really excited they're growing very nicely and I can't wait to start seeing flowers blooming at some point so <clears throat> while we're waiting or while I'm waiting for my sunflowers to grow, I thought that it would be really fun to do a sunflower garden art piece. And you can see this is on a much bigger piece of paper. Uh, you can work much smaller if you like, and you don't have to quite have so many flowers, but I wanted to do a bright and sunny sunflower garden today. And you can see here, um, I used, uh, we're going to talk about overlapping shapes as well as changing size and position to show space. So we're really practicing space with this lesson. Also, I have in the details below information about how sunflowers grow and their lifespan. There are some videos in there, some basic facts, some pictures, and then there's a slide in there where you can get a pop out, you can make a pop out um, butterfly like I did here. At the end of the video, I will show you how to cut and glue to make this little guy pop out. And uh, I also use watercolor to paint it in and some extra crayon details, which I'm gonna explain in the video as well. So um, you can do not have to paint. You can just color if you like. You can use crayon and marker, whatever works for you um, that makes sure sunflowers look like fun sunflowers. I hope you enjoy this video and enjoy making some sunflowers today. I'll see you in just a moment. Hello, we are going to be making sunflower gardens today and a couple of materials that you're going to need is you're going to need pencil, um, a piece of paper, um, you can, I'm using a much larger piece of paper, uh, which is called 12 by 18, but you can use a piece of construction paper or you can use copy paper or any type of paper that you might have for sketching and drawing. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to be using crayons for this activity today, and then I have a um, slideshow, a Google Slides attached to the video in the details uh, with uh, several pieces of information about sunflowers um, and how the life of a plant um, works. Uh, so if you want, there's also videos to watch and just sort of learn from. And then I also have a page to make pop-up butterflies. You want to print this page only um, because you're going to be using the templates I have here to cut out and pop out and add to your, to your sunflower garden. So you may want to take a moment and go and look up that slide and print it out real quick. Okay, I'll put that to the side. I'm also going to put, put my crayons up for a few minutes because I'm mainly going to focus on drawing for a couple minutes. All right, the first thing I would like you all to do is make sure your paper is turned horizontal hot dog so it's wide across. We have lots of space for our sunflower garden. Also, one of the art concepts that we're going to be using is space. We're going to be showing space uh, with our sunflowers. We're going to show sunflowers coming forward and going back in space. There are three techniques we're going to be using to create space. One is size. So for instance, objects that are closer to us tend to be bigger. Objects that are further away tend to be smaller. We're going to also be doing placement. Things that are closer tend to be lower. Things that are further back tend to be higher or closer to the horizon line. And then the last thing is overlapping. That means one object in front and the other one is behind. I like that. And oftentimes when and the one that is behind is partially blocked, showing us that there is something going back and behind. Overlapping is a, probably one of the best ways to show uh, space. So we are going to be using those three things to create our sunflowers going back in space for our sunflower garden. 
Um, the first thing you want to do is you're going to draw our front sunflowers first because uh, we see their entire bloom, their entire shape. Um, you can use something round to draw the center of our sunflower if you like, or but that size will be changing. I'm going to be using just drawing from my arm to, to draw the different size shapes or the centers. So I recommend that you give that a try too. Sunflowers do not have to be perfectly round in order to look nice. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, I'm also gonna go lower for my first set of sunflowers in my sunflower garden. So I'm gonna go big and I'm gonna go lower. I'm not gonna worry about overlapping yet. I'm gonna do about three different sunflower heads. Now, the shape of a sunflower bloom has a very large center and small petals, and that's what we want to draw. So I'm gonna start with a one, maybe one circle right here. And if you notice, I am drawing with my arm. I'm moving mostly my arm and very little of my hand. Um, this is my technique for getting nice circles. I like to sort of show where I'm going to be drawing before I put my pencil down on paper and when I'm ready. I like to slowly draw my circle. Remember, try and stay a little lighter. Um, and if it's not perfect, actually that's okay. It really does not have to be super perfectly round. It could be a little wonky. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it will look perfectly fine, especially when we start adding petals. If you do draw, make sure you draw really big. So for instance, you can see this is much bigger than my fist. Um, that's what I want to see. I want to see nice big flowers. If you draw a teeny tiny little flower, well, that's not really a sun. Some flowers are huge. Sometimes they, they are big, as big as your house or as tall as a first level house. They're extremely tall. They can grow up to six, seven feet. So you want to, and their heads can get very large. So we want to draw large, um, flower blooms. Okay. So nice and big. Um, I like to check if you mess it up, you just dress it up, you fix it first and then you race. Okay. I'm going to do two more. So maybe one in the middle. And if they're a little different in size, that's okay. And maybe one a little higher up. I'm thinking right here. And you can see that one's not perfect, but that's okay. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the different blooms. If you have two flowers really close together, it is likely that the flower petals, excuse me, we're gonna be drawing the flower petals next, are gonna do a little bit of overlapping. So you have to decide which flower, um, if like these two are so close together, they're probably gonna have some overlapping. So I'll probably start with this one and that means that the petals will be in front. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line coming out from the center. We're not going to go too long because petals on sunflowers tend to be a little shorter than the actual center of the flower. And then we're going to do one side and we're kind of going to do like an almond shape like that. I'm using sort of the center line to find where my two sides will stop a little bit like leaves. So I'm going to do several and if I can put them, I'm going to space them out a little bit. I'm using the lines kind of like a guide for where my petals are going to sit. I'm going to add a few more in between once I draw them in. And then I'm going to start, you can see I'm using a line to kind of show where the top of the petal is. Kind of like an almond or a teardrop shape. I'm going to keep drawing. I'm going to go all the way around. It's okay if some are not super perfect. Some can be a little wonky as I say on one side, totally okay. And I'm kind of using my, and if they're going out of the shape a little bit. Now this, you notice, um, is touching. So it is gonna show as if it is overlapping um, the circle a little bit. And that's okay if we see through it, we'll do a little erasing later. And this is still feeling a little bit too spaced out. It's feeling very like, like it doesn't have very many petals. So I'm gonna add a couple more in between. This is gonna take a little bit of time, this type of drawing. So if you wanna do two big ones to do a little less, that's fine as well. And then I'm going to show a little bit overlapping. Now you notice 
that when I draw the petal, I stop when I get to the petal in front. So if I'm drawing a line, I'm gonna stop as I go to the petal. So it's overlapping. The, this petal's in front, this petal's behind, showing overlapping. And that is important. It shows the spacing of the flowers and it feels like some of the flower petals are in back, some flower petals in front. It just gives it more realism. And you notice I'm not doing every single space. I'm kind of skipping here and there, you know, because sunflowers are not super perfect. Not every petal looks exactly the same. Not every petal is in the exact same spot as another petal. Sometimes there's a little bit of variety in where the petals are placed. I'm gonna add one more right here. I only add it if I feel like it feels like there's too much of a gap. Show a little more overlapping with that. And then I'm gonna do my next one. So I'm gonna start with lines. You can pause the video if I'm moving a little too fast. And when you're done catching up, you can restart the video too. So please keep that in mind while you're working. And you can see I'm working from the top of the line until, and then I curve out and in, out and in out and in, out and in, out and in. And see, not one side does not perfectly match the other side perfectly. Or you can work from bottom up, whichever works to create those petal shapes. Now I'm going to add a little extra petal as if it's going behind. You see, I'm not drawing through the flower. I'm stopping when I get to a shape and skipping it so it looks like it's going behind. So I'm going to add one there and add a few more in between. I'm gonna do my next one and I'm probably gonna come back pause and come back when I'm all done all right after you have your sunflowers and petals done the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some stems um, because we're obviously gonna see those stems because they're in front I'm going to start with one vertical line. I'm going to wherever the bottom, we want to try and keep it centered to the, to the circle right underneath. If you have the petals in the way, that's okay. Just start at the petals and come straight down with one line and, add, and come back up. And we're going to do another vertical line. So we want to make a shape. And I have a little bit of space at the very bottom there. And I'm going to put two vertical lines under this one. And then I'm going to do some big petals. And the petals, uh, excuse me, next I'm gonna do some big leaves coming off of the stem. And they tend to be spaced out. We're not gonna see as many leaves because we're really close up to these sunflowers, but they're really big and they, they are staggered. That means they have space in between each one. And I'm going to curve up and over, up and over. And I'm going to use kind of a similar technique as the petals. I'm going to use this line. This is going to be the vein, the main vein of the of the leaf. And I'm going to come out and then in kind of like a heart shape or even a teardrop just like this. Nice and big. And I can't see too many because they're too far down. I might add one right here coming up a little bit. And maybe going out of the paper edge a little bit, and that's fine. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do another set of sunflowers going back in space. This next set, we want to show it, uh, we wanna show the space by getting a little bit smaller in our circles, and we wanna show more overlapping. So I'm going to start maybe right about here and add, because I have a big space right here, and I'm gonna overlap my first um, circle see that it's a bit smaller 
Maybe I'll add one going off the paper edge a little bit and going behind. And I'm going to imagine it's going through and coming back out right there. Might be a little big. I might shorten that up just a tad. There we go. Just so it feels like it's a little further back in space. And then I'll add maybe, maybe I'll stop here for a moment and start adding a few more of the petals. Uh, actually, I'm going to add one more right here. Maybe Oops. a little closer. Yeah, I'm going to add one right there too. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did with the front sunflowers, adding those lines. Remember, you want to make those lines a little shorter because the petals are going to look smaller going back in space. If you get close to uh, the sunflowers in front, you want to stop. Don't draw through and um, show some overlapping. I'm going to do this sunflower first because it's really close to this one. There'll be a little overlapping and then I'll do that one or I'll do this one and then that one. I'm going to do a little work. You guys can pause the video. Uh, you can watch for a few minutes. I'll kind of do a, a couple of these and then I'm going to skip to the next step. All right, you can see that I'm done with my second layer of sunflowers. I have a little bit of a sunflower peeking out there. So I'm going to add a little stem in the background, maybe a couple leaves if I have the space. Oops. Come out and then in. Um, and I don't see so many here, but I could show where some of the stems might be behind, going behind a little bit here and there, because um, the stems of sunflowers are really long and they, uh, that's why sunflowers are so very tall. Um, I'm going to do one more set of sunflowers much further back. So I'm, some of them we might see the full bloom and you can see how much smaller we're getting. You might show a little bit more uh, overlapping. Maybe I'll show one right here going off the paper edge. And I'm going to continue to add, um, I'm going to go ahead and add some stem. All right. And then I'm going to also continue to do the same technique for these smaller flowers. Now, if you want to add a couple more, maybe I'll have one kind of popping up behind there a little bit. And because they are much smaller, you might see more of them because of um, the amount, how big they actually are. You might have more space for them. So I want you to try and leave a little tiny bit of space at the top for a little bit of sky. Um, but if not, that's okay. It's totally fine. All right, I'm going to continue to work and I will come back of when I'm done with this next step. Remember, same techniques, just doing it a little smaller. Take your time. If this is something, like I said, you can do less flowers. If you have a smaller piece of paper, you're going to have less flowers that can fit. And it might not take you as much time as this much bigger piece of paper. Um, I just wanted to do a really big flower garden for this example. And so, um, but you could do something much simpler and not as many flowers if you like, if it's too much work. So take your time. But if you like this drawing that we're doing and you like the big, even though it's taking you time, well, you could break up this drawing and do it, you know, a little bit today and a little bit the next day if you need to, need a little extra time, that's totally fine. You know, you you can take your time and really do this project well. Um, I'd rather you take your time and do this project well anyway. All right, guys, I'm going to finish up these smaller sunflowers. This will probably be my last row um, and move on to the next step. I'm going to probably skip on over. If you need extra time, pause the video. Okay, so I add, finished up all my little sunflowers in the background. Some are overlapping, some are not. I have a little bit of space, just a tiny little bit of space. I'm going to show a few. The one thing I'm missing is I should add a couple more stems. Like, for instance, these stems way back here. I'm going to add a few kind of going behind. Maybe something like that coming through. I can't really see that. This one we might see. 
a stem, two lines, and you notice my stems, I'm putting my lines closer and closer together as they go further back. Because remember, things that are um, further away tend to get smaller. I'm gonna try and show a few of the leaves peeking out from behind. This one where we see more of the and you see I'm trying to come down over every couple inches and show a leaf some leaves going off of the paper edge kind of bend maybe I'll show one coming by here because I have the space again this is different for every drawing what you can and cannot see is going to be different just going to add a little more, a few more stems just to imply that there's probably more sunflowers behind. Just add a couple more stems. And then the other thing I'm going to do is kind of add a little bit of a horizon line uh, where the edge of flowers as they go further back. Um, the other thing I didn't mention um, is when things get so far back, they get less and less detail. We see less of what's happening. So I'm just gonna add sort of like a bumpy line behind all these really close where the tops of other sunflowers might be as they go further back. And that way it just gives us sort of a guide of where our sky and where the tops of our flowers are going to stop. <clears throat> then we're gonna move on to color. So I'm gonna put this aside. Now I mentioned crayon meaning going in and um, uh, tracing. So one of the things I meant by crayon is to take a color. So for instance, if my the center of my sunflower is a really dark, dark brown, so I take a brown and trace it before I color it. So anytime uh, before I color, I wanna always trace and then fill in. Now, I am just going to do, I'm actually going to, you can fill everything with crayon or you can use marker or colored pencil or oil pastel. I actually, what I'm going to be doing here, I'm doing a little bit tracing with these colors because I'm actually going to take out my watercolors and I've used my watercolors quite a bit, but this is a lot, this is a very big drawing. It has a lot going on. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use my watercolor. Watercolor paint is a really quick and easy way to fill a artwork up with color. And then after it dries, I'm going to add some crayon details. So I'm going to be combining watercolor with crayon details, but I am going to use the crayons to do some of my tracing. So each color that I have, I want to use for each shape so green for leaves and stems yellow for the petals maybe some more green for this horizon line and then i will be pulling out some watercolors to help me do some more filling i'm going to explain what to do with the space in between the flowers as well to kind of fill it in and feel like a filled field of sunflowers so I'm gonna take a moment, I'm gonna go and do my tracing and I will be back to talk about watercolor. So I'm gonna pause this video. If, if you need um, some time to catch up, pause the video and we'll join in just a few minutes. All right. Here I finished sunflower, uh, tracing all my sunflowers with different colors of crayon. I tried to use colors that I would be would be the same color as the object that I traced. So yellow for the petals, brown for the center, and green for the stems. Um, I'm going to switch over to my watercolors and I'm gonna use uh, watercolors to fill in. Now, you do not have to use watercolors. You could, could, have, uh, you could keep coloring with crayon or color with color pencil or markers, whichever one works. Now, whenever I'm doing, <clears throat> whether it's a watercolor painting or even painting with um, uh, with with um, now even if I am painting with watercolor or even using any other art material to color in my picture I'm still going to start with background first I always like to fill 
um, the background objects first, like my sky and my ground, as much as I can. So I'm going to take watercolors and I woke up my watercolors by gently swishing, adding water. And I'm going to fill in my background. Remember if when it comes to watercolor, if your color is too dark, just take a little water to soften it up. And I'm going to carefully, now the reason why I use crayon with watercolor is because if I get a little too close, it won't, um, the paint will not uh, blend into my shape too easily. I would actually, if I get close, it actually will avoid and not quite go past the color lines, which is very helpful. That's why I oftentimes use some kind of crayon, whether it's black crayon or a colored crayon to trace when I'm using watercolors because it helps uh, contain the paint in a certain area or shape a little easier. Um, it's not 100%, it just makes it easier. So I'm filling in my sky. And the next thing I'll do is my, let's try fill in my sky. bit. Um, one way of smoothing out your watercolor again is water. It's just water. Um, water is the key to uh, moving and softening and controlling the watercolor. All right there's my sky and then I'm going to do um, for the spaces in between as well as for the leaves I'm just going to use green and fill it all in. Now if if you want, if you have two different color greens, you can use one green for the background and another green for the stems if you want. So like I could take my green, my regular green, color wheel green, and do the spaces in between. Even if I get a little bit on the stems or leaves, it's not a big deal because they're gonna be some other kind of green. And then I can use a different green, maybe this limey green, to fill in the stems and leaves just to give it a little difference but if you want you can just use the green that you're using in your background to fill it all works pretty good and again that <clears throat> that green outline kind of helps show the different areas of your drawing if you're using black black is good to use for an outlining you could could have just traced everything in um, black crayon and it would have showed up really nicely, especially since we're doing green in our background and green on our objects. Those th things tend to blend a little bit when they are the same color and the lines are the same color. So I'm going to fill this. Then I'm going to stop here for a moment because I'll come back and finish. I'm going to take my yellow, wake it up, and do those petals. So Typically the order I go about painting something is I do background and then I do um, the objects in the picture. So I would do the stems and leaves and also I like to paint lighter colors first and then darker colors so they don't accidentally mix. And it's hard to fix dark colors. It is not as hard to cover up mistakes with lighter colors. And then I'm gonna use the brown paint um, now some, I sometimes have students go, but the center looks black, Mrs. Hamilton. Well, it may look black. It's really a really, 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 really dark brown, almost a complete black. So I'm actually, like I said before, I'm going to be painting all this first, and then I'm going to go back and do a little detailing with crayon. So, <clears throat> so right now I am using a little bit of a dark color for the center, mainly because of what I'm planning for the crayon details. So I am going to work on this for a little bit. You too, you continue to work on whatever step you're on. And I will, and then I will be back after I've painted everything in because the last step is just adding um, some details with crayon. And then we have one more thing we're gonna add, which I showed at the very beginning of this, uh, of this um, project, which you do not have to do. It's sort of like an extra bonus thing to add to your artwork, and that is to add a little pop-up um, butterfly. So I'm gonna pause the video, and I will be back shortly with um, everything painted in. All right, see you in a moment. All right, I am all finished 
painting in my entire picture. I used watercolors to finish that up. As you can see here, the last thing I wanted to show you, you could content consider yourself done at this point. There is still maybe a couple things you could still do with this. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put that out of the way. Push this to the middle. And I've got some crayons. Now, one of the things I did is I painted. Now, you can just color this, fill it in, color it, marker, crayon, or you can do what I'm doing, which is I painted it with watercolor and I'm gonna do some additional crayon uh, texture and technique. So one texture, the center of the sunflowers could be a little darker and they tend to have seeds. So I could take a black crayon and I could m use short, quick little marks to give the sunflower a little more texture. This might take a little bit of time, only, be only because I drew my sunflower so big. So any additional texture that I'm gonna give it is gonna take me a little bit of time because I used a large piece of paper and I drew very big. Um, the, more, the bigger you go, sometimes the more you have to add in, but it makes for a really amazing art piece when it is on a larger scale. You can see I'm sort of adding that texture. If you want to do that, you can. You can even, I can go even into my browns and mix in some brown texture in with the black texture. I use the black texture over the brown, the brown paint just so you could see it well. Um, because if you notice, I'm using brown crayon, you can barely see it. The crayon stands out a little better against the watercolor. So I'm just gonna add a little bit around the edge. I could fill this whole thing in, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Okay. All right, <clears throat> you could also take some orange. Um, a lot of times the sunflowers are have a, the sunflower petals or color come in reds and oranges, and we could use this orange as sort of a texturing. So you're gonna, or shadow, a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of orange to each petal. You can see I'm mainly starting from the inside or the bottom of the petal and working and just adding some streaks of color up. And it just sort of gives it a little more texture and a little more color. So that's something that could be done easily. Uh, the last thing that you can do, I'm gonna, I'll come back and I'll finish this in a moment to show as a final. The last thing you can do is I, in the slideshow that I attached to this video, uh, there are some resources, information about sunflowers, growing sunflowers. I did explain this earlier in the, in the video but there's also a page in there with some where you can make pop-up butterflies so there's two uh templates uh two butterflies on the page you print up the single page um you can color one or both butterflies and then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to very carefully cut around now i recommend printing this on thicker paper than what i have um, I looked around, I couldn't quite find copy paper so, or uh, cardstock, which is a thicker paper. Um, so I'm using regular copy paper. I am cutting the antennas off just because they're so hard to cut around. I'm gonna add them in later. So if you wanna do that, you can. And I'm gonna carefully cut. Now, one thing you could do is cut around one like this, see it's a lot less cut. You're not having the whole page in the way. I'll put this out of the way for a moment. And then continue cutting around the butterfly. I'm gonna try and do this quickly. Okay, here's my butterfly cut out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully bend at the, where the wing meets the body here and here. So I'm gonna take, maybe put my thumb 
right where I'm going to bend. See, I'm going to bend it up against my thumb. This is just a little technique. So I'm going to gently bend, just a little bend like that. And then I'm going to put my thumb on the other side and just, just so I know where my bend is going to start and stop. And just do a slight bend so that the body is flat and the wings pop, okay? So you might need a little help from your parent, that's fine. Or if you wanna try and attempt it by yourself, that's fine too. You can take a little glue, just a dot, just on the body, none on the wing. Cause if you get on the wing and just a little bit, just a hair of glue, enough for it to stick. And if, but if you get it on the wing and then you push it down, it's gonna stick completely flat. So I'm gonna place it maybe right about here. Think about, it laying down. Now, do you think it makes sense to put it on a sunflower in the back? No, because this butterfly is really big, isn't it? So it's got to match the size. Um, we probably should not put it in the back butter uh, back flowers because those are too far away. They're too small. So we're going to place it on our front flowers because the butterfly is so large. Now, you could uh, make your own butterfly. I'm going to just stick 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 a little tap 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 and kind of push up that wing so it looks like ooh so it looks like it's popping out so pretty very nice I really like how that turned out um you could take a piece of paper an extra piece of paper and draw out your own butterfly we did do butterfly designs last uh video and cut them out and, uh, and make them pop out on your own. So you could use your own design or you could use my templates, completely up to you. A couple other things that you could do um, uh, as well, you can either draw them out, cut them out and add them in and that is other types of bugs. Maybe you add on a couple ladybugs and stick them on. Maybe you have uh, a couple of these butterflies on. Um, maybe there's a bird or something. Um, it's up to you. You can be kind of creative with this. All right, guys, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And I will see you next time. Um, and keep creating. Bye, guys.